What would you do if you ever hit the lotto for $100 million? Story 1. Realistically, delete all social media and then go explore the entire world and party until I felt like I needed to settle down, then run a tequila factory or something to keep myself busy and fulfilled. But ideally, take care of my parents and brothers, make sure my nephew's and niece's education is taken care of, and start a business that can net me an upper-class income to live off of. Invest whatever's left. Story 2. Buy a house. Someplace on a lake but not too far removed from society. Travel a lot. See a lot of historical places I've always wanted to visit. After all that wore off, I'd want to find a way to help people and animals, particularly orphans, dogs, cats, and homeless people. Give back somehow. Give people that feel hopeless some kind of light to see forward. Probably sounds tacky, but it's what I would want to do. Story 3. Retire and give my two friends I known for 20 years enough money so they can retire and never work as well, so we can all hang out with our families and kids together all the time instead of trying to sync up all our schedules perfectly. Story 4. Pay off my house in debt. Buy cars for my wife, parents, myself. Put a master suite edition on house. Various home updates. Set up trust funds for my kids. Set myself up so I don't ever have to work again. Buy a few guns. New clothes for the family. Buy some land close by. Put up a pole barn. Ride dirt bikes and exercise all day. Go to the beach and read a bunch. Story 5. First off, don't tell anyone. Gracefully leave work. Probably four week notice. I like my employer, so I'd give them plenty of time. I'd probably go see a CPA and a lawyer with the plan of setting up a state trust. Set aside half for taxes. I think tentatively splitting. Ten million dollars to put in an income fund to generate a healthy salary replacement. Dollar four hundred K slash wire would do it. Would probably largely maintain lifestyle, but would probably spend a little more on hobbies, travel, and a housekeeper. $10 million to purchase properties. Retirement home in WNC. Vacation homes. I'm staying in my current house until my kid is through school, but in five years we'll have a house with a view. $5 million for charities. $5 million earmarked for the kid in an indexed fund. $5 million for friends and family support. Eventually word will get out, but do try to be discreet about the existence of large amounts of money. That'll leave $15M++ whatever I've overestimated from taxes. Just stick it in a fund and forget about it. The first $35 million will do whatever I need to replace income, live the way I want, and support friends, family, charities, and kid. I'd probably put the bulk of my assets to charities in the will, unless the kid has big ambitions and fiscal responsibility. Story 660% goes into a high-interest savings for the inevitable taxes. Five million dollars each into four different accounts for my wife, myself, and each child that are not to be touched unless emergency breaks out when the kids are old enough. Were the remaining twenty million dollars I'm selling my house and moving back to the suburb of the big city I loved but couldn't afford, and buying my dream house for probably dollar five m cash, overpaying to ensure I can, then buy a Rolex, two reasonable cars, big SUV, probably a suburban and a new truck, and quitting my job. We'll travel and chill and send the kids to the best schools, but outside of the house and travel, I wouldn't change much beyond forever erasing the cloud of fear that lingers over every debt I'll no longer have. Story 7, 5 million for me, 5 million for the family, buy a building and put in a dozen or so MRIs, and hope there's enough left to put into a trust that hires a couple of doctors and some techs and other staff so that people don't have to wait 18 months for imaging. Never understood why Bezos Gates types don't do that in cities around the country. They'd make it back within a few weeks and look good too. Story 8. I'd love to spend my life traveling and doing charity work. I'd set up a forest and sea restoration charity and perhaps something for LGBTQ people around the world. But I wouldn't manage them myself, although I would be involved. That and hire a chef, personal personal trainer and driver lol. Oh, and buy a big house with a massive garden and create my own garden paradise with a maze. Story 9. I would retire, 53M. I would also not tell a soul. My travel would potentially get a bit more extravagant. I would maybe tell my wife on holiday. I would set up trusts for my kids, and they would have no access to it till the youngest was 25, so they would all have had a go at normal life. Story 10. Not tell anyone, including my family, till I had multiple planning sessions with attorneys and financial planners. Once I have everything locked up legally and financially, hand the keys to my business to my employees, help on an advisory role for the year to make sure clients and team are taken care of, retire my parents and then retire myself without out letting anyone know of the windfall. Chase powder snow around the world till I get tired of it and eventually settle on a beach in Mexico close to a regional international airport 
and live out my days relatively low profile and anonymously. Story 11. Tell no one. No one. Lawyer up. Turn off phone. Get new one. Leave my listed residence for an undetermined amount of time. Disable all connected social media. Silently pay off family and friends' debts within reason, with lawyer and other professionals' assistance for stealth delivery. Then, when things settle, reimmerse back from my self-imposed luxury exile and just upgrade my life. Try and do some good with a chunk of it, and bank, invest the rest. Story 12. Get lawyers and secure it. Fix family. Secure me in them. Take time to travel, to avoid people knowing, and to get my mind right. Once my little life is secure, then use that money to enrich the community. Start business that will fold over to employee-owned co-ops. Buy homes if I can afford it. Start starter hope communities. Sell under market value on long contracts to keep corporations from buying up. Get people housed. I also would have a piece of land nearby for all friends and family. Grow sorghum, blackberries, apples, and have bees. Make artisanal local blackberry jam that pays the taxes for the place. A large central kitchen, bathhouse, a bunch of small cabins. Have a creek, maybe a fish pond to farm bluegill. A little gun range, a nice fire pit, and social area. That would be nice for everyone, and everyone can help with. Hopefully building my local community up. Showing and using the values I uphold. Be broke before I die. Probably buy a whole bunch of debt and forgive it. That's good, too. Story 13. After the obvious of shutting up and getting a lawyer and financial planner, buy a house and a large amount of acreage that is far enough away from people, but close enough for good utilities like water and internet, and not too much of a drive to get anywhere. Set up trusts, and a very large donation for both the local library system and an animal shelter adoption group in my area that is desperately in need of a stable location. Story 14. After I contacted someone smart enough to protect the money and get the tax BS out of the way, I would pay off my mortgage because currently we are close to losing our home due to a string of unfortunate occurrences. Ensure that my family and future grandchildren were to never have to worry about finances so that they can live a stress-free life following their dreams, which I'd probably have as few rules to keep them from being shitheads everyone should be able to do. I would help a handful of close friends by removing their financial burdens. I would use the rest two ways. Helping people with hearing loss get free hearing aids and help for life. People of all ages, not just the lucky ones who qualify. Finding people in situations like M current situation and bailing them out with strings of needed to discourage shithead behavior so that they could live their lives with a strong foundation to thrive and continue to society. The tough part is finding people when they are in need, truly in need. For instance, most of my friends probably don't know my situation. The people who need to know know. I'm not going to ask my friends for financial help because they can't help me and it's not their problem, so why burden them? I'm not able to borrow from family, and I can on O work so many hours. I have faith, though, and I haven't always had that, so I know that if I stay strong in my sobriety, continue to work hard and take care of my family, that hopefully this chapter of challenge in my life will have a happy ending. I have about four months, roughly, to make a miracle happen. A miracle to me, pocket change to many. Anyhow, thanks for the opportunity to vent. I didn't intend to, but I spend a lot of time thinking about what I would do with a large windfall like that. And what makes me happiest is knowing I could help people not feel like I do right now. Story 15. I'd go to a financial advisor. I'd get a new-to-me car and professional organizer. I'd prioritize paying my debts, then my loved one's debts. Then I'd like to look at the medical debts in my community. I'd definitely set some money aside for scholarships and charity. I'd also like to retire at 55 or so. Fuck working until I'm dead. It feels pretty selfish, but I just don't know how to help people out more. Oh, I'd probably go on vacation to celebrate too. I've never really enjoyed thinking about these things, though. It feels like I'm teasing myself with a scenario that will never happen. And when I'm done, the truth of reality just feels heavier. Story 16, not tell anyone. Use the money to pay off any debt. Buy houses to invest. Invest in everywhere. Invest a small sum in everything. And live my life as is, perhaps just having more fuck you money if I really need it. I'm pretty okay where I am right now, and I'm not exactly tight for cash, nor do I really have anything I want. Story 17, same as the question earlier today, asking what I'd do with $10 million. Put most of it away in a safe investment, high interest savings account or bonds, and live off the dividends. Put a couple million into a nice piece of forested land, a good 100 acres. Then spend some money fixing up the home on that property, library room, garden, home theater, whole house back power generator, etc. Spend my time on the property wandering the forest, gardening, reading and watching TV and relaxing. Although with 100 million, 
There's definitely enough there to give 50, 75 mil or so to various charities. Definitely wouldn't need more than 10, 15 mil to be set up for life. Story 18, spend money with lawyers, but ideally, create a nonprofit. Donate the winning ticket to the nonprofit. Have the nonprofit claim the winnings, if possible, with the expressed purpose of buying low worth debt of people currently being abused by said system and forgiving it. Failing that, simply distribute funds similarly. I don't want my grandkids fighting over my estate, and this ensures that the money does some good, hopefully without being savaged by income taxes. Story 19. I would not quit my job. I'd go back to work and not do what I didn't want to. I'd also remove the filter and start saying the things I'd been keeping to myself. Fuck just outright quitting. I'd make it miserable for my boss and enjoy every second of it until they warned me, put me on a pippy, and fired me. With $100M, I wouldn't give a shit other than sticking it to my a-hole boss. Story 21st. I would go to a financial advisor. I would put it in savings and depending on the advisor's advice, invest some. I know nothing of that world, so I would need help. I wouldn't use the money unless for those investments, etc., and just continue studying for my university degree. Then once I graduate, I have a very, very nice figure on my bank account. And by then, I probably will have more knowledge on what to do with that amount of money. Story 21. That's about 50 million after taxes. First thing you do is form an LLC so when the roaches of my past find out, I'll have an extra layer of legal safety against all the lawsuits. Then there's a few abandoned cool old buildings in downtown Phoenix. I'd buy one of them and convert it into man-child paradise. Indoor go-kart track, bike ramps, and a trail system for mountain bike. A complete garage with a few lifts to work on cars. Story 22. Give a couple meal to my close friends and family members. Give couple mil in donations to the towns and the reserve next door that were a big part of my life growing up. Put 10, 15 mil away for myself and family, and then see what I can do to help out around the community with the leftovers, which would be between 70, 50 million. Story 23. After I stopped hysterically laughing from the news, I'd consult a financial advisor. I want to invest the lump sum and live off of the interest. My kicker, though, is to annually deposit a set number of funds to charity, prob paying off medical debt for others. The goal is to slowly slim down my funds as I get closer to end of life. This'll mean by the time I'm old and gray, I gave away more of that money than used on myself. I was able to be comfortable, and I'd hope I could do the same for others. Story 24 after taxes, that's about $1.45 mm net. The idea would be to invest every penny, work for a year, and let the money grow in the market. Don't tell anyone, not even family. In the meantime, set up financial planners and lawyers, set up trusts, and after a year or so, have a large family meeting. It makes me feel so good to give, so I would tell everyone then that we won't run lottery, wife and I. It's a lot, and everyone is going to get some. I would tell them that this is all that they get. If you burn through it, there is no more. That's all. I would use the money I make from investing to give to them, with maybe an extra million or two going to the parents. I would let all of them have access to my financial planners and lawyers and let them set up how they would want to use the money. Then keep the principal invested, live off of the invested income, and do some fun things. I would give to my church and hopefully in a few years, own a few businesses in a specific sector. Everyone wins! Story 25. Not tell anyone at all. Talk to a lawyer and accountant. Figure out how to legally collect winnings without my info attached and minimize publicity. Set up tax strategy and decide on payments versus lump sum, etc. Collect winnings. Wait till the money is officially available to me. Then breathe. I would pay off all of our debt. I would put as much as I legally could into investments and savings and such. Currently, we are renting. If I was rich, I might still keep renting. After owning for years, this is nice. More dollar, 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 but not having to worry. Nice. With that much money, we could travel more live different places, and buy a home wherever we wanted for the most part. I think I'd wait on that decision and not get tied down yet. Thinking about that now, though, maybe I would buy land in different places. Eventually, I would love a place that had enough space for our friends and family plus workshop, barn, and more. Land likely won't get cheaper than it is now. Indulgences? Once I had the structures set up to take care of my money so it takes care of us, we would splurge just a bit. I would love my wife and I to have clothes that fit us well, look flattering, and suit our needs. Maybe not custom-made, but definitely new and tailored to fit and purchased with the help of someone who has that knowledge and that eye. Next, makeovers. We haven't all been to a hairstylist since pre-COVID. I want all of us to have healthy hair that flatters us, making sure we are all up to date on our dentist's visits and eye doctors and such. 
My wife's teeth are a little stained, and I know it bugs her. Then a family vacation, experiences, new core memories. Give us a couple weeks to rest. Have never had that. At the next stage, we'd reevaluate our lives and intentionally build them. I know my wife would love to study and finish her PhD. If we could pay, she wouldn't have to worry about being a graduate assistant unless she wanted to. I would get a tutor for my child and help figure out what he wants to do. He thinks tattoo artist is his path. Cool. Let's set him up with an apprenticeship at a place that treats him well and ensure he's got loads of time and practice materials to build that portfolio. Me? I want to learn some simple metal working. My wife likes rocks and it would be fun to be able to make some nice display pieces of things she's found. The big change would likely be that we'd have someone help cook and clean. We need better nutrition on a consistent basis. If the burden of planning, shopping, prep, cleaning, storing, etc. was taken off us, we could be loads healthier. Speaking of which, I'd get a family concierge doctor. Right now, all the primary care docs on our insurance have long waiting lists. It would be nice to be able to get appointments when we need them. That's what excites me. Financial security, rest, and a baseline that's been reset for success. Story 26. I'd continue with life as normal for a bit, a year or so, as I figure out what to do with that money. I'd start fixing up all my current cars and sell all of them except for my 2000 Jetta, which I'd sink 100-200k into both rebuilding it from the frame up and fully customizing everything I ever wanted on it. I'd take whatever money was needed, making it a AWD car that could swap to RWD at the push of the button and make the engine reliably make 1000 WAP but tunable on the go so I could lower the power with a simple input to make it a fun but not dangerous daily. While doing this, I'd also start looking into getting a new better home, in a good area, probably in some of the open land between Colorado Springs and Castle Rock. Build a decently sized but practical house, not too big, but with a specially built eight-car garage and decently sized workshop building somewhere else on the land. I wouldn't tell any of my friends where I'm moving, and I'd keep my townhouse in the city if I needed to pretend to have a place in the city. Then I'd buy all my direct family members their own houses fully paid off, send my siblings to college and give my parents five million so they can retire in luxury. At this point, I'd put some money in some sort of investment to keep a revenue stream open in the future. Then I'd just enjoy life, traveling to whatever places I wanted to go and being able to finally unleash my creativity in personal projects without having to worry about cost ever again. At some point, probably come clean to my friends and let them choose between getting a paid off good house or 200k each, what I feel is enough to greatly improve their lives without destabilizing them. Story 27, collect the winnings anonymously, and I live in one of the few U.S. states that allow you to do that, and take the lump sum, invest like 80% in a trust fund that pays me dividend income, then take the rest if the money, pay off all debts, buy a beach house, a mountain cabin, a sailboat, and outfit a really nice workshop. Then gift a bunch of money to friends and family via setting up trusts and trustees to oversee the money so they don't blow it all. Then retire and spend my days raising my kids, working in my workshop and going on vacations to the beach or mountain house or out on the sailboat. Once the kids are out of the house, sail around the world and see if my kids want to come, otherwise bring friends or go solo.